Name the machine. The first thing you need to do is to give the machine a NetBIOS name. From the control panel, double click on the network icon. This will take you to the network dialog box for the machine. The first tab in the dialog box should be the identification tab. Here, you need to identify your machine with a name. However, you cannot edit either name here. But instead of that, you must use the change button below the two text fields. Pressing this button raises an identification changes dialog box where you can reset the workgroup and the machine name. Installing the TCP IP protocol. Next, select the protocols tab in the network dialog box and look to see if you have the TCP IP protocol installed. If the protocol is not installed, you need to add it. Press the add button which will display the select network protocol dialog box. You should immediately see the TCP IP protocol as one of the last protocols listed. Select the TCP IP as the protocol and confirm it. Installing the workstation service. After installing TCP IP, press the services tab in the network panel and check that you have a workstation service. The workstation service is mandatory. The service is installed by default on both Windows NT Workstation 4.0 and Server 4.0. If it is not there, you can install it much like TCP IP. In this case, you need to press Add button and then select Workstation Service TCP IP. After you have installed the workstation service, return to the protocols tab and select the TCP IP protocol entry in the window. Then click the properties button below the window. The Microsoft TCP IP protocol panel will be displayed. You will need to work on the three of them. IP address, DNS, WINS address. IP address tab. Select the specify an IP address radio button and enter the computer's address and subnet mask in the space provided for the proper adapter. If you use DHCP on your network, select the obtain an IP address from DHCP server button. The gateway field refers to a machine typically known as a router. If you have routers connecting multiple networks, you should put it in the IP address of the one on your subnet. Back in the Microsoft TCP IP properties window, select the DNS address tab. DNS tab. From the DNS tab, enter your pilot ID in the host name box and user.msu.edu in the domain box. At DNS service search order box, press the add button and enter 35.8.2.41 in the window that appears. Once again, press the Add button. This time, enter 35.8.3.42 in the window that appears. At DNS suffix search order box, press the Add button and enter cl.msu.edu in the window that appears. Once again, press the Add button. This time, enter msu.edu in the window that appears. Back in the Microsoft TCP IP properties window, select the WINS address tab. VINS address tab. From the VINS address tab, do the following. Enter 35.8.2.25 in the primary WINS server box. Enter 35.8.2.69 in the secondary WINS server box. Once you have done this, Press the OK button. If Windows asks you to restart your computer, select No. You will be returned to the Network Control Panel. Host Files If you don't have either DNS or WINS and you don't wish to use Broadcast Name Resolution, the Windows Host File should appear in the Windows slash Host directory of whatever local drive Windows is installed on. Bindings. The term bindings is a way of saying connected together at configuration time. 
It means that the TCP IP protocol will channel through the Ethernet card and is actually connected properly. If you return to the network dialog box and set the show field to all services and click on all the plus buttons in the tree. This means that the workstation, server and NetBIOS interface services are connected to the WINS client. This is the correct binding for Microsoft TCP IP. Adding Network Adapter From the Network Control Panel, select the Adapters tab. Inside the Adapters tab, press the Add button. A new window will appear titled Select Network Adapter. If your Ethernet card is listed in the Network Adapters box, select it and press the OK button. Otherwise, press the Have Disk button and insert the disk that came with your Ethernet card. Configuring Network Adapter A Network Card Setup window will appear. Here, you must set the IRQ level and input-output port addresses to the values selected when you installed your card. Once you have done this, press the OK button. A network adapter bus location window will appear. Here, select either ISA or PCI depending on your card type. Do not change the value in the number field. It should remain at zero. Once you have done this, press the OK button. You will be returned to the network control panel. From the network control panel, press the close button. When Windows asks you if you wish to restart, restart Windows. Once you have restarted your computer, you will have full network access from your computer. Introduction to Network Administration Workstations A workstation is a client computer. It is used to run applications. It is connected to a server from which it obtains data shared with the other computers. Servers Connecting computer systems Network computers share data, software and hardware resources. All workstations and modems, scanners, printers will be connected. Network server environment Multiple users and devices can be managed by a network server. All the workstations are connected to the network server. Client server environment Data can be located on one server or located across a number of servers. Here, data can be entered and distributed across the server. Server farm All the web servers are connected to firewall. Database 1 and Database 2 are connected to switch. Client server interaction the following services are connected to NOS server, HTTP service, Telnet service, FTP service, APPS. Network operating systems. There are three points to be considered for network operating system. Security, performance and management. Windows operating system. Windows 2000. Professional, Server, Advanced Server, .NET Unix Types Popular versions of Linux are following Red Hat Linux, Open Hat Linux, Coral Linux, Slackware, Debian, GNU or Linux, SUSE Linux, Apple, Mac, OS X version 10.1 is has got faster overall system performance, burn CDs from the finder, it has got improved graphics and printing, service applications and protocols, web services, file transfer, email, print services, TCP IP based services, World Wide Web, file transfer, file sharing, Network Administration Evolution of Network Management Networks are increasing in scale. Completely, there is a clear need for management functionally. Requirement of Network Management Ease of Use Monitor Response Time Security Rerouting 
user registration network management model consists of organizational model informational model communicational model and functional model snmp and cmip standards simple network management protocol added tcp ip standards in 1989 components of the organizational model the network management station nms is usually a stand alone workstation but it may be implemented over several systems centralized network management architecture there should be centralized database central nms nms queries hierarchical network management architecture it consists of nms server nms client nms communication local query distributed network management architecture pure nms nms server nms client nms communication local query management information basis management information basis mib1 mib2 and other standard mibs snmp protocol understanding the agent information database object defines provided in many management bias the features of management protocols are uses a community string match uses a username string match for authorization the syslog facility console messages nms creation of user and groups you can create groups using the active directory users and computers console groups appear in two of the domains containers built in and users the built in groups are shown in the figure they cannot be deleted or made members of the other groups the built in groups have certain important permissions already assigned to them the other groups you create can be given membership in the built in groups similarly if you want to disable a particular built in group you would do so simply by removing all its member groups you should be careful while changing the membership of the built in groups for most networks while it is important to understand what these groups are and how they work you generally want to leave them alone generally you work only with groups defined in the users container the image shows that default groups in the user container which you can distinguish from user accounts by both the two person icon and the type designation to add a new group select the users container in the left pan then open the action pull down menu choose new and choose group you see the new object group dialog box as given here enter the name of the group in the first field you will see the name you enter displayed in the second field this field enables you to specify a different group name for windows nt pre windows 2000 computers however using different group names is usually not a good idea because it can quickly make your system confusing after naming the group you can select from the available option buttons in the lower half of the dialog box the group scope section refers to how widely the group is populated throughout a domain domain local groups exist only within a single domain and can contain members only from that domain global groups can contain members only from the domain in which they exist however you can assign global group permissions to any domain within the network even across multiple domains universal groups exist throughout organization even when the organization's network is made up of many individual domains universal groups can also contain members from any domain in an organization's network don't worry if you create a group with the wrong scope you can easily change the group with wrong scope provided the membership doesn't violate the new scope's rules for membership to a domain scope select the group and open its properties dialog box 
right click and then choose properties from the pop-up menu. If the group membership allows the change, you can select a different group scope option button. Maintaining group membership. A new group starts out without any members. To set the membership for a group, follow these steps. Select the group and open its properties dialog box by right clicking it and choosing properties from the pop-up menu. Then click the members tab as given here. Click the add button. See the select users, contacts, computers or groups dialog box as given here. Type in enough of a user or another group's name to identify it. And then click the check names button if you type in too few characters to uniquely identify the user or group. Windows will show you a list of other possible matches from which you can select the correct one. Choose the member you want to add and then click OK. Repeat steps 4 and 5 to complete the group membership. Setting up a network printer. You can easily set up a printer connected to a server. So, other network users can access it as well. However, for networks with more than 20 users, you are better off either buying printers with network interfaces and built-in print servers. It can be done using dedicated print server boxes that interface between a printer and the network. For most laser printers, adding a dedicated network interface and server increases the cost of the printer. Also, printers with built-in print servers are far easier to relocate on the network. They can go anywhere a network connection exists and where power is available. Once connected to the network at a new location, the printer logs into the network. Then, it starts doing its work immediately. If you want to share a printer connected directly to a Windows Server 2008 server, this is the easiest way to do. First, open the Servers Printers folder. From the Start menu, choose Control Panel and then choose Printers, which lists all the installed printers. Right-click the one you want to share and choose Sharing from the pop-up menu. The Properties dialog box for the printer will appear with the Sharing tab activated. You might want to use a feature called Printer Pooling for high throughput needs. It enables you to set up a number of identical printers. They are all connected in single printer queue. They appear to the network as one printer. Using printer pooling, you need whole bank of printers appear as one printer to the users. This will dramatically increase the number of print requests you can handle. Keep in mind that pooled printers must be identical because they will all use the same print driver. On sharing tab, assign the printer a share name by which the client computers will recognize the printer. At this point, you can click the OK button because the default permissions for a shared printer are for everyone. Alternatively, if you want to set other permissions for a shared printer, use the Security tab of the Printer's Properties dialog box. The groups assigned in the Security tab are the default assignments for a shared printer. It is with the Administrator's permission as provided here. Three main permissions are assigned to each entity. They are Print, Manage Printers, and manage documents. The every group has permission to print, but not to manage documents in the queue. However, a special group called creator owner has permission to manage documents. This means that the user who sent the print job automatically has permission to modify or delete his own print job, but no other user waiting in the queue can do this. Installing Local Printer Local printer is required before you share it on network. To install local printer, connect it with system and check it in printer and fax. Click Start, Setting, Printer and Faxes. If you did not see any printer here, 
it means the system has not detected the printer yet. You need to install it manually. Click on Add a printer. This will launch Add Printer Wizard. Click Next. Select Local Printer attached to this computer. Click Next. Select Port on which you have attached the printer. Select the manufacturer and model of your printer. If you have printer driver CD, then use Have Disk Options. Give any name to your printer. For example, Office Printer, Lab Printer, anything that is close to your specification. Then click Next. If you want to print test page, then choose Yes or otherwise select No. Then click Next. Click on Finish to complete the wizard. Before sharing on network, it is best to test the printer. Do some printing. Sharing a printer is similar to sharing the folder. Right click on the printer and select Sharing. You will see the following dialog box. Click on if you understand the security risks. Select Share this printer. Provide a name for the shared printer and click OK. Sharing hand will appear under your printer. Network File Sharing File servers peers are both servers and clients. Network file sharing employs remote procedure calls, RPCs. Network file systems allow the user's files to migrate from workstation to workstation within them. Network file systems simplify life for the user, but generally make system administration more complicated due to the setup cost. Network file sharing let us see how to set up Sun Network File System NFS services on the lab machines. NFS has two components, the server-side software, the client-side software. Each component is actually a suite of programs which implement the sockets required to provide network-based file system. NFS is stateless. Network File Sharing Server-side RPC bind, port map, mounts D, respond to mount request, sometimes called rpc.mountd. Relies on several files which are listed here. NFSD serves files actually a call to kernel level code, lockd, file locking daemon, statd, manages locks for lockd, R quota D manages quotas for exported file systems client side biod client side caching daemon mount must understand the host name dot directory convention file system entries in slash etc slash vfs tab tell the client what file systems to mount the mount command has several extensions to be used with nfs Mount has to understand timeouts, soft mounts, background mounts, and the auto mounter. RW or RO, read and write and read only. NFS file systems that are mounted read write can block activity on the client when the server providing the file system becomes unavailable. Network file sharing hard option. The hard option mounts on NFS file system in such a way it ensures that data is returned to the remote file system. If the file server becomes unavailable, a file system mounted with the hard option will stop all remote file operations. Until the file server becomes available again, all the file systems mounted with the read-write option should also use the hard option to ensure the integrity of data. Soft option. It does not provide assurance of data rights to the remote file system, but does not stop remote file operations in case of a file server becoming unavailable. This option is useful for file systems that are mounted read only. SUID or no SUID. The NOSUID option 
negates the effect of programs on the remote file system for which respective set UID bits are set. Set UID programs run from NFS file systems mounted with the NOS UID option. They are executed with the normal permissions of the user executing the program, not those conferred by the set UID bits. This option is used to increase the security of the client by preventing set UID programs on remote file systems from being used on the client system. BG slash FG. This option pair controls how to handle a failed mount of an NFS file system. Mounts with the BG option are retired in the background. It frees the shell which issue the mount command. Use this option when mounting file system in slash etc slash VFS tab or slash etc slash FS tab to prevent a workstation from stopping during the boot sequence because a file server is down. Interruption slash no interruption. The no interruption option prevents program interrupts when programs cause an NFS operation to occur. This can result in programs being uninterruptible when an NFS file server becomes unavailable. The default is to allow interrupts so that programs can be aborted in the event of server failures. Retry equal to N. Number of times to retry a failed mount. The default of 10,000 is usually sufficient. Time O is equal to N. Timeout value for retrying NFS operations. Increase this value to permit very slow systems such as near line file stores. More time to complete basic operations. Retrans equal to N. Number of retransmissions of a given NFS operation. The setting depends on the network and the type of server being used. Some networks where packet loss is high benefit from an increase in the number of retransmissions. R size equal to N. Read buffer size. Some servers and clients perform better when the buffer used for NFS operations is a different size than the default. Example, those with slower or less reliable network connections. W size is equal to N. Write buffer size similar to R size in usage. Proto controls the network protocol used to transport NFS data. NFS uses IP datagrams by default. By setting Proto equal to TCP, NFS will use TCP, thereby improving performance when moving data over wide area networks and the internet. Secure on Solaris 7 and early versions of NFS, this option enables NIS plus public key cryptography. It is to be used for NFS authentication and encrypted communications. This option has been deprecated in favor of SEC option explained here. Windows uses a different approach to file sharing. Server Message Block SMB is a proprietary protocol that was developed to support Windows networking. Port 135, Port 136, Port 137. The NetBIOS name service, Port 138, Port 139. The NetBIOS session service. Now that Microsoft has embraced TCP IP networking, Windows is converting to a new protocol, Common Internet File System, CIFS. Network File Sharing Permissions Under NFS and AFS, the user can assign access permissions to directories and to the files within those directories. Under Windows, the permission cover the directory. Files within a directory inherit the permissions of the directory. Shared folder permissions only apply to the folder when it is accessed via the network. The local permissions pertain 
when accessing files locally on the server. The default permissions under Windows is everyone, full control. This means that everyone has got access to all the files in the shared folder. Group permissions. Domain. Administrator and server operator groups can share folders on any host in the domain. Power users can share folders on a single host. Work group. Administrators and power users can share folders. Users with the Create Permanent Shared Objects permission can create shares. Network file sharing relies on remote procedure calls. Network file sharing is convenient for users. It requires setup by, by the system administrator. Network file sharing options opens the door to many security problems. Client configuration This client configuration instruction has the property of assumption. It assumes that the network interface card has already been installed. Then it gets configured on the computers. Configuration means the proper installation. The process is performed for the latest driver. It is done for the NIC. NIC means network interface card. Accessing network and dial-up windows. Accessing the network and dial-up windows. Network and disconnections. Use right-click. Network dial-up connections. Configuration of Components Client for Microsoft Networks File and Print Sharing Protocol NetBEU TCP IP Only one protocol need to be configured for the client to connect to the network. It is a good practice to have only one protocol active at any point of time unless the circumstances dictate otherwise. When multiple protocols are active, the network access speed may slow down. Protocols NetBU is a non-routable protocol. TCP IP is the routable protocol that is standard on the internet. Completing the client configuration At this point, the client configuration is completed by pressing the OK button and restarting the computer if asked to do so. The client is now connected to a local network, where all the computers are now function under the NetView protocol. NIC Configuration Updating It is necessary the NIC configuration should also be updated by pressing the Configure button. A wizard will help in the updating of the driver. Driver Wizard Find out the following page. Welcome to the Upgrade Device Driver Wizard. Click Next. Checking the resources. The resources used by the NIC can be checked. IRQ, Input Output Address, Base Memory Address. This step is optional as it is used only for informational purpose. Typical Networking Components Client, Client for Microsoft Networks. Service, File and Print Sharing. Protocol, TCP IP, NetView for internal local networks. Client options. Find the following page. Microsoft Networks, Novel Netware. Services option. File and print services, SAP agent. Protocol options. TCP IP, NW link, etc. Installation of TCP IP. Choose the TCP IP protocol and click install now. It is always a good practice to have only one protocol in operation, in which most cases it would be TCP IP protocol. NetView can either be checked out on the box or completely uninstalled. Configuring the TCP IP. Dynamic IP addresses. Obtain properties from the DHCP server. Static IP addresses. Configure the properties manually. To configure the properties, either double click on the protocol or click on the properties button. Configuring dynamic IPs. Simply click the appropriate boxes in the TCP IP properties windows. 
it is done to obtain IP properties and the DNS address automatically. The following values must be obtained from the network administrator and configured. IP address of the client, subnet mask, gateway address, primary DNS address, secondary DNS address, WINS server addresses if present. Advanced TCP IP settings IP, DNS, WINS, Options Network Administration Learning Objectives In this chapter, the user would learn the following in detail. Installing and configuring the network using Windows NT-based system. Administration of Windows NT-based network. Creation of user and groups. File sharing and printer sharing. Conclusion In this chapter, we have covered the following aspects of network administration. Installing and configuring the network using Windows NT-based system. Administration of Windows NT-based network. Creation of user and groups. File sharing and printer sharing.